dog food, bought the collars and anything else and done the vaccinations and done the microchipping, that really would be very, very useful to prove to the political establishment in this city that we do, we are serious about saving the dogs and cats and other animals in the city. Um, there are also uh, is campaign literature up here uh, on one of these tables and uh, volunteer sign up. There's two sheets, volunteer donation sign up sheets. If you can make clear is that there is an election on March 8th, the second Tuesday of March. It will be the primary election. Now, one of two things will happen. Either one of the candidates will get 50% plus one. That means 50% of all votes cast plus one vote. In order, we'd like to introduce our next candidate. Our next candidate is something well known to the folks. Antonio Villagosa represents the 14th district of the Los Angeles City Council. In 1994, he was elected to represent the 45th district of the California State Assembly, where he served first as major whip, majority whip, then as majority leader, and later as the speaker of the State Assembly. He also served as national co-chair of the John Kerry for President campaign as co-chair of the Plat Platform Committee for the 2004 Democratic Convention. I can tell you personally, just for me, I was thrilled to know, which I'm not really up on politics, that as an assemblyman, he put aside $25 million for the Bologna area, basically for the wildlife in the Bologna area. He does have a track record. You are proud and pleased to welcome Antonio Villaraigosa. Thank you, Michael, for that uh, introduction. Thank you, all of you, for inviting me here to be with you today. Uh, I'm proud that uh, four years ago, when I ran for mayor, I had the uh, endorsement of the animal. Legislative Action Network in 2001. I know that uh, a number of you uh, were very supportive back then. Uh, but I'm not asking you to support my candidacy because of what I did uh, four years ago and what kind of campaign I ran. I'm asking you to support me because uh, of my record, uh, because of what I'll do for you uh, as mayor of the city of Los Angeles. Let me share a bit, though. I know you want me to focus on animal issues, and I will, but uh, let me focus a little bit on who I am because not everybody here knows that, despite that big introduction. Born and raised in the city, I'm a third generation Angelino. Um, I've uh, often said this is uh, one of the few places in the world where the son of an immigrant could grow up and, and be uh, the speaker of the assembly, be on the threshold of leading a, a great city. But you know, uh, in my um, handout to you, uh, I say, uh, if a great city, and I often say in this campaign, that a great city is a city where we're growing together. A great city is a city where we're prospering together. A great city is a place where we're investing in one another. And I often say that, that the measure of a great city is how we treat uh, those among us uh, who aren't uh, wealthy uh, and powerful, uh, the children, the poor. But what could easily say that uh, for the animals? Because when you look at uh, how, if you measure a great city and you ask yourself, uh, if a great city can't treat its animals well, how's it treating its children? How's it treating people? Uh, and I think the answer in this city is that we're just not doing a good enough job. We're not providing the leadership on issues that are important to people and children uh, or the issues uh, that are important uh, to animals. When you look uh, at this city today, and, and let me share with you uh, a moment, uh, a capsule view of what the city looks like today. Today we have a Department of Animal Services uh, where uh, consumers, uh, animal lovers, the humane uh, community are shunted. Uh, they're not welcome. Uh, there's a sign, there, or there should be a sign. Uh, there may as well be a sign if you were to determine just how uh, people are being treated in the humane community that now it says humane community uh, animal lovers not welcome uh, because that's uh, the treatment that's the, the lack of cooperation the lack of 
engagement on the part of this community uh, that, uh, is this repainted? <laughs> I'm touching this and realizing this is brand new painted. Uh, um, you look at uh, the fact that currently uh, in this city uh, there just isn't uh, a real policy. You know, for two and a half years ago, or maybe it was a year and a half now, uh, Jim Hahn said that this was uh, going to be a no kill city uh, by 2008. Uh, a year and a half later, no plan, uh, uh, nothing, uh, except 44,000 animals killed uh, every year uh, in this city. When you look at that number and you think about what that means, uh, it's clear uh, that there's no uh, effort on the part of the leadership of this city uh, to, to make this city a progressive city. I am unquestionably a progressive on many issues, on issues of poverty, on issues of the environment, on issues of health care and the like, but I'm also a progressive on issues uh, related to animals and I want to share with you uh, my record because uh, the best way to see uh, where someone has gone uh, is to see what they've done. Uh, and in uh, this city, uh, I've had uh, for now 10 years uh, a man by the name of Jim Bickhart uh, who's standing there in the back. And those of you who know Jim Bickhart knows there is no single individual working in a council office anywhere in the city of Los Angeles who has spoken out for you, who has worked with you, who has engaged you and collaborated with you uh, when he worked uh, for council member Galanter, uh, when he worked for me uh, as, uh, you know, assembly whip, majority leader and then speaker, uh, and now uh, as a council member. Uh, he's worked with you and I've worked with you through him because we understand how important it is for us to have someone, a voice, someone who can work through that bureaucracy to get things done. But let me share with you some of the things we've done uh, in the last few months and over the last uh, years uh, in office. We authored an ordinance to allow larger donations of funds and in-kind goods to the Animal Welfare Trust Fund. It was an, an idea that came from you. Uh, food was rotting. Donated food was rotting uh, at the Department of Animal Services. And you came to us at, and said, hold it, you know, it's rotting before the council can end up approving it. We've got to do something about it. That's it's nonsensical. We want to help. We know that the, the city isn't, uh, you know, filled uh, with uh, the resources to do everything that it wants to do. We want to help. And you, you, you are creating barriers and obstacles for helping us. And so we put that... Uh, ordinance together. You brought us the idea. Uh, we worked with you and now uh, we're going to have uh, the ability to make those kinds of donations uh, and ensure that this food goes to where it should go. Uh, to feeding animals, to providing people with the resources where government just doesn't, uh, isn't stepping forward. Uh, a number of you raised the issue of what's happening to Ruby uh, when Ruby comes back. What's happening to the elephants? Uh, I wrote uh, those letters to the Department of Animal Services um, and um, frankly, they weren't received very well. I had a council member uh, confront me on the council floor uh, screaming at me, why would you uh, get involved in this matter? And I said, it's simple, I'm just asking questions. Uh, that's the role of a legislator, the role of a council member, the role of a leader. We know uh, that the zoos really aren't places uh, for elephants. Uh, that elephants should be those uh, that, are, that are more akin uh, to their habitat. Large places, not places where they're confined in the way that Ruby is. And so when I asked those questions, you would have thought I was the fortune teller. Because a few days later, we had a death in our zoo, Tara. And that death, we don't know exactly why she died or how she died, and we're going to find that out. But some of us believe that, you know, you can't confine an animal uh, the size of an elephant or a giraffe and expect uh, that we're going to be able uh, uh, to live healthy and, and not develop arthritis and all of the things that come with living uh, in a confined um, um, area. So I spoke out uh, and wrote letters and have uh, demanded accountability. And I'm going to tell you, 
I'm going to want to find out. You're going to see me on the council floor uh, argue that we need to find out what happened uh, to Tara. We need to ensure that our uh, elephant population there uh, is uh, protected and safe. You know, when I got elected to the to uh, four years ago, when I ran for mayor, I talked about dog parks. I talked about a dog beach. I said, look, uh, I'm the author of Proposition 12, the largest expansion of parks and open space in, in U.S. history. Uh, I, you're right, I invested uh, $25 million in the Bayona wetlands because I understood that we need to protect our wildlife. I've spoken out, I've done something, not just talked. Uh, I've actually done something uh, to address these issues. Uh, so when I became a council member, uh, I stood up and said, I'm going to put a dog park uh, in the northeast Los Angeles, in the Herman area. Now, you know, there's always going to be opposition to almost anything you do uh, in the city. And, and, so, and, and so it should be. That's what a leader has to do. Many of my friends in the environmental community uh, just asked me, you know, how come you're so tough on these dog parks? You know, we need parks for people. You said that. And I said, yes. We do need parks for people. In my environmental uh, Green LA uh, proposal, I talk about dogs for people. I mean, dogs for people. <laughs> I want that too. <laughs> I talk about parks for people, but also parks for dogs. We can coexist, everybody. And so I brought the, the environmental community together uh, with the, the humane and animal lover community and the dog lovers and the community overall. And I said, look, we're going we're gonna to move ahead with the dog park. And that dog park's going to open in the spring, maybe February, maybe March, and in the next couple of months, it's going to open because of leadership. I had to bring and build consensus with people. I said, look, you know, I understand we have to protect the environment too, and we're going to do that. And we have to protect communities as well, and we're going to do that. But we can build uh, and create a new dog park, and I'm proud to say that that dog park is going to open in northeast Los Angeles. And as mayor of this city, you're going to see someone advocating for dog parks and maintaining them and working uh, with all of you. I staff, you know, I, I mentioned Jim Beckhart, and I'm going to tell you, if you've got a strength, you might as well keep on, you know, pushing it. Jim Hahn says, you know, every chance he gets, he brings, you know, Bill Bratton with him, because that's a strength. Most people see him as a leader, uh, as one of the few things that he did uh, that was actually uh, exemplary. Well, I'll tell you. I hired Jim Bickhart, and you clap for him for a reason. This guy has been your voice. He has been our connection with your community and our connection with animal services. And I can tell you, uh, we're going to hold uh, animal services uh, accountable. Uh, but that's part of this track record as well. I've actively supported the adoption of LA spay and neuter and breeder licensing ordinances. I've spoken out. I've been there. Uh, Jim has written uh, all of those uh, great memoranda in support of that kind of good pu public policy. I was there with you uh, when we supported Proposition F to fund construction of modern new animal shelters. I wasn't, uh, I'm not a Johnny come lately to this issue. Um, and finally, I voted and spoke and supported and helped uh, Senator Hayden on his Hayden bill to improve the humane treatment and adoptability of shelter animals. Uh, when I was in the legislature. I didn't just come to this because I'm looking for your endorsement uh, now as a council member. So uh, we go through our record because it's, it's easy for, for us to get up here. You know, we've all done a little due diligence. We all know more or less what you care about. It's easy to speak to the crowd and throw red meat. But you know what? Uh, we need a leader. We need a leader. We need a leader, and I'm speaking obviously metaphorically, everybody. we need a leader that can get things done. Someone who's going to get elected. Look, this, there's a lot of great people running for this, for this office. A lot of great people, and I'm not here to disparage any of them. I will say that the person we have now is not the right person for Los Angeles. And the animal lovers of this state. Person. And there are a lot of good people, but there's one person that's got the best shot here, everybody. It's going to be a rematch, and most people know that. And why? Because we've done the research, we've looked at the polls. This race is going to be between Jim Hahn and Antonio Villaraigosa. And picking between Jim Hahn and Antonio Villaraigosa, I think the record's clear. We're all going to speak well 
to our record. You have in front of you, and I want to share with you some of the things that we're going to do um, in, in our effort here to create uh, a more humane city. You know that when you look at my plan, we're going to focus on accountability. I'm a big believer, not just for animal services. I'm a big believer that, you know, when you run for office, you know, every four years you have an election, you got to speak to what you did. The good things you did and the not so good things you did. Uh, because that's what accountability is all about. I get it when you run for office. These, the people that run our uh, departments, the people who sit on our commissions, need uh, to get it as well. You're going to see someone, and look, let me, let me speak about the big elephant uh, under the rug here, okay? Yes, I was one of 15 votes for Gerald Stuck. Yes, and right, and you can boo, 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 get the boo out, get the boo out. I also spoke out, I also spoke out and asked questions. This was Jim Hahn's appointment, he wouldn't be mine, and I guarantee you, when I'm mayor of the city of Los Angeles, Gerald Stuckey will not be the head I like to deal with accountability. I'll be accountable for that vote, but also for my record as well. Not just what we say we're going to do, what we've done, because the best measure to, to determine what someone's going to do is what they've done in the past. We're going we're to focus on reducing animal uh, overpopulation. I will make the battle against animal overpopulation an absolute priority. I intend to hold the new general manager accountable for creating a legitimate plan. A plan, everybody. A plan that will hold them accountable to, to reduce euthanasia and make real progress to involve human beings, to involve the humane community as partners with this department. You know, one of the criticisms about Jim Hahn has been the fact that all of his commissioners, whether they're you know, animal services, where, wherever they are, you know, they're almost all wealthy contributors. Uh, what you're going to see from me is people that are going to do, I'm going to do something novel, like bring the experts in. You know, bring people that have, you know, and in this community, the experts are the humane community. You're going to see uh, a, a commissioners in the Department of Animal Services and, and our Department of uh, Board of Commissioners for um, animal services, you're going to see people who come from this community, people who care about animals, people who want to create public-private partnerships with the Department of Animal Services that doesn't have the resources that it has, people that are committed to adoption uh, and ending euthanasia or, and, and severely limiting it anyway, uh, people that, are, that care and want to be smart about how we uh, you know, expand our services and do uh, better by more people. I'm going to insist that we have mobile spay, uh, neuter, and adoption programs and that they be made more available and more affordable. Because this idea that you hear from animal services that we're competing with the vets and so we have to charge more than many vets do to do spay and neuter is absolutely unacceptable. You know, look, uh, we're going to have to make it affordable because that's the only way some people who live in South Los Angeles on the east side are going to be able to afford it. You know, I worked uh, with the Sam Simon Foundation and brought that truck and went to the east side and didn't just send Jim Bitcard over there. I went there at 6.30 in the morning, you know, schlepping there uh, because I understood why it was so important to put a face on the humane treatment of animals to put uh, my face, which is well known on the east side, and say to people, look, we've got to stay in neuter. We've got to adopt. We've got to move away from euthanasia. I'm willing to do that in South Los Angeles and West Los Angeles, in the valley, using the powers that come with being the mayor. And I say when you're mayor, you know, God will call you back because it's a big job. So use the bully pulpit to speak out. Use the bully pulpit for, to, to hold uh, animal services accountable and to, and to educate, educate, educate everybody. You know, we've got people that think, you know, it's okay to, to buy a dog, you know, and then take it back. You know, I'm going to tell you about Antonio and Natalia, and I know Walter and others talked about their dogs. You know, I got Caramelo and Butterscotch, and I'm going to tell you, you know, Antonio says all the time, he's your son. 
Daddy, we've got to buy him a present. Daddy, my daughter says, you know, Hammy, and we had Hammy for five, for four years, a little hamster. Hammy, caramelo, and and um, and butterscotch are your children. That that's the way we treat our animals in our house. And the idea that you would give your dog back is like giving your. How do you give your child back when he, you know, when your son does something that you don't particularly like? And don't raise your hand. I know you're joking. Uh, you know how do you do that, everybody? We've got to work to get. Uh, you know, and create more animal-friendly shelters that are bringing you in and making adoption the first priority. That are working uh, to educate our kids and our families. Is a dog right for you? You know, is a, is a, it's a cat uh, right for you? You know, it, or whatever other animal that you're getting. You look at my agenda. It's an agenda that is an animal-friendly agenda. It's an agenda that came from you. I didn't put this plan together out of the top of my head, everybody. I consulted many of the leaders in this community. I did that to put my agenda together. I've done that as Speaker of the Assembly and as a council member, and I'm going to do that as mayor. Because that's, what, that's how you put together a plan for accountability. You do it by working and engaging people. If I have a strength, I believe, it's an ability to inspire people to do more. I had 5,000 people on election day five years ago. Only Tom Bradley has ever had that number of people. I had many of you walking precincts back then. And I did, not because I'm perfect on every issue, but because I care. And because I engage you. And I get you and say, hey, look, in a place of limited resources, we can't talk out of both sides of our mouth. We can't say we're going to eliminate all the business taxes in the city of Los Angeles, as some have done, and then at the same time say we're going to fully fund animal services and our police department. I'm not a demagogue, everybody. I'm the real deal. I've shown that in office. Maybe you don't agree with me on every issue. Maybe I'm not, you know, just there for you on every single issue that's important to you. But I'll tell you, I listen. I hire good people. I engage. If I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong and I move on. Correct my behavior. You won't see the pay to play. You won't see someone who, who hires somebody for animal services that has absolutely no experience or for the airport or the police department for that matter. You're going to see someone that engages you. I think if you look at this plan, you're going to see someone that listened to you and it's going to put together someone that can win, that listen to you and can put together an agenda that's respectful to animals and, and that's going to be the, the most forward-looking city. Just like we're going to be the greenest city, this is going to be the most animal-loving big city in America. I guarantee you if you're like me. Garden and spoke for 30 minutes and then avoided the tough questions. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not, you know, I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Okay. Um, actually, uh, you, you sort of answered this question already. Why don't we just say what it is so that nobody thinks that somebody's helping me or something? Yeah, I don't want to. It was in relation I don't want to get him upset here. No? Yeah. It was in relation to uh, your uh, vote for Gurdon Stocking. Well, no, no. Yeah. The question is, why did you vote for Gurdon Stucky, especially since you didn't think he was a good choice? If this was just playing politics, yeah. how do you know? How do we know you wouldn't continue to play politics with him? I think the best way, the best way to know that, and, and you know, I'm glad, I'm glad I asked him to. To check the question because you'll never see me play games. I, I, I hold. Uh, I understand accountability. Uh, I voted for Stucky in the end because uh, I asked the tough questions. This was Jim Hans' appointment. I have voted uh, for almost all of Hans' appointments because I think the mayor um, has the, the responsibility to the make those appointments. I had already opposed the airport uh, and. Uh, um, by myself, the only vote, uh, one of three votes on the airport, one of one vote on Playa Vista, 
and I said, look, uh, I'm going to fight for another day. We're in an election. I'm going to hire my own uh, head of Department of Animal Services. He will not be Gerald Stuckey. Uh, I can guarantee Good. you, or she will not be Gerald Gerd. Stuckey. Gerd. Gerd. See, Gerd. 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 Um, the answer was, I voted for it. I voted for it because I think that the mayor said three things. One, the mayor uh, makes those appointments. Uh, I asked the tough questions about uh, the department chair. Three, I'm going to appoint my own, and that person will not be Gerd and Stuckey. Okay, the next question is, in recent years, LA City government has come under fire from the humane community for failing to prosecute cases of animal cruelty within the city's jurisdictions. How would you respond to the request for increased prosecutions of animal cruelty cases? Again, let me tell you what I've already done. Many of you have raised the issue of animal abuse and animal cruelty, and the fact that the police department uh, and the city attorney's office are not working in concert on that issue. So Jim Bickhart and I, working with some of your, uh, uh, some of your representatives uh, began to, to begin the dialogue with the city attorney's office and uh, the police department. Uh, and as a result of that, um, we're going to put uh, 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 an ordinance. Uh, the, Tony Cardenas has already submitted that ordinance to address more collaboration and more focus between the city attorney and the police department to engage in dog fighting, cock fighting, and all of the animal cruelty kind of issues. We're going to put together uh, a coordinated task force, city attorney, uh, animal services, and the police department. So we're already moving in that direction for that ordinance. Um, why is it that the rescuers are shunned and not helped financially? Um, don't want to hear no budget. What's the real reason the rescuers should be paid for what they're doing? They are doing the city's job. No leadership is the answer. And no commitment. I mean, look, you can't say that you're committed uh, to a no-kill uh, or a low-kill policy, have 44,000 animals, say you don't have money in the budget, and then completely shun uh, and uh, the humane community from the public-private partnerships that are going to get us out of this crisis. What you s will see uh, is someone that, if if the city is limited in its budget, and we are, is going to think out of the box. Out of the box thinking is bring in the private sector, bring in the, the humane community. Uh, and we will create incentives to do that. My ordinance uh, for the animal, uh, uh, in support of the donations, uh, is one concrete example of the way to do that. Thank you very much, Councilman. Thank you. Thank you all for your Craig Shreve is here to introduce uh, Mr. Robert Hurstbrook.